population proportion um, <laughs> using statistics. So this is, uh, this is inferential statistics, what we're getting into right now. <coughs> this is inferential statistics. We're trying to estimate what's going on in a, uh, in a population. And so you, sometimes you're talking about millions of people, millions and millions of people. So how do we do it? Well, we go out and we get a sample. We get a sample that's representative of the population. Could be just a thousand people, though. But from that thousand, and we, we, we do it by simple random sampling, from that thousand people we obtain, we can make inferences on what's going on with the millions, right? We can really get an idea of really what is that, that population proportion. We'll never be 100% perfectly accurate, right? But we estimate, and that's what we do in steps. It's far better to estimate something, it's something like a really cool question, a really cool problem, and get the exact answer to something in this world that's just kind of, you know, basically lame. So in this case, that's what we do with stats. We estimate. We'll have a certain level of confidence with this. So we're going to be doing confidence intervals about a population of abortion. The title in your book, they titled Estimating a Population of Abortion. They thought that'd be more appropriate for the student to understand. Yeah, that's what we're really trying to do. We're trying to figure out this thing. Put it up here. It's called rel. It's the population proportion, but we don't know what it is. It's something cool. And these questions get posed every day. That's what's so cool about this section. So you can go online after class and just pop up like any professional polling site. It could be Gallup polling, uh, USA Today. It could be Rasmussen <coughs> reports, Quinnipiac. Any of these polling places, and see what polls they just ran the last week. And there'll be questions. It, it doesn't have to be politics, everyone. It could be anything. But you can look in there, and they're using everything we're going to discuss today. So you can imagine most people read that stuff. At the very, very end of their article, they're going to talk about margin of error, level of confidence. Most readers probably have no idea what they're talking about. They ignore that. And they're just like, okay, what's, what's the proportion? That's what they're focused on. You'll understand it exactly. You'll know where it comes from. So that's what's pretty cool. So I could grab a problem out of the textbook, absolutely. And do a problem, but those problems in the book are on every poll done in that book. It's probably about three years old, true? So I figured I'd go online, grab a poll that was done in the last week. So that's what I did, and that's the question we'll start with today. Um, a poll was done. <coughs> and this was the question was they asked in terms of the next election, all right, is the issue of abortion important? And they, they called people. They did it randomly, everyone. They did you know simple random simply. They called people on the telephone, asked them this question, and uh, this is how they responded. So is the issue of abortion important to you? This is the question was asked. So, 1,000 likely voters were asked this question.
Is the issue of abortion important to you? Oh, it was in the next election. issue abortion important to you when voting in the next election, then they ask likely voters. So that means that they made a phone call to someone, it was a random phone call, and the person answered, and they probably asked them a few questions first. You know, when was the last time you voted? And the person was like, oh, I haven't voted ever. Do you plan on voting in the next election? No. No, it's not worth my time kind of thing. Well, then that person wouldn't be a part of this poll. So that's when they had this likely voters. All right? So if they call and the person answers, what, 13 years old? Right? You're like, okay. So they're 13, so they're not a likely voter. So 1,000 likely voters were asked this question. Um, they were sampled, this, this sample here, the 1,000 people. This is a random sample. I do want to point that out. And this isn't made up. If you want to know who did this, someone, it was Rasmussen Reports. Rasmussen Reports did this, this polling right here, did this survey. All right, so this is, came out of this. 700 out of 1,000 responded yes. And the other. The, the other 300 responded yes. And we're going to conduct, construct a confidence interval about mm -hmm. what is the proportion. See, that's just 70 out of 1,000. And what we're trying to do today, Owen, we're trying to see what's going on in the entire population. All white <coughs> voters in the United States. So we're talking about millions of people, right? But that was only, what, just a, just a group of 1,000. It's a big difference. Well, that's how we do it. And it's called inferential statistics. So the first thing we're going to do before we run and construct the confidence interval, the first thing we always do, everyone, we're just going to verify our requirements for this. All right? So we're just going to verify any requirements before we look at this, you know, and consider, hey, whether or not is the distribution of the sample proportion approximately normal? And you go, oh, yeah, aren't there some checks for this? And you probably remember this from last class, everyone. The checks for this are, one of them is, MP2. N, oh, good, MP2. The book writes MP1 minus P, just like that. And then when this is really right here, that's really a row. So if you want to go N times rho times 1 minus rho. <coughs> An easy way to remember it is just N and P and Q. But it has to be greater than or equal to check. Right. We got a random, they already said it's random, so we're good there. That's one of the requirements. It's a random sample, I'll list that. But this n times this rho times 1 minus rho has to be greater than equal to 10. That's one of the requirements we've got to make sure is going on so that the distribution of the p hat that we're going to look at is approximately normal. All right? uh, there's one other one, so I'll put a comma. The sample size has to be less than 5% of n. Oh my gosh, do not let this annoy you. This is absolutely going to be true, everyone. We can check it. Big N means the population size, the size of the population. Are we talking to millions of people? Yep. Big N is like all likely voters. So you and I are like, in the U.S., my gosh, so we're 320 million people in the United States. So likely voters, well over a million. We can use a million, it's going to be good to go. So we'll be checking out. I'm going to put one more thing. They did say it was a random sample, so we have that good. So random sample. Some students just write SRS here for a simple random sample, just to represent, yep, it was a simple random sample. Hey, uh, so before I go on to B, we're going to construct the, the, the confidence interval. This stuff's a lot of fun. In the end, we'll talk about fast ways to do this on a calculator. I know you like that. There's something really important. Some of you might have spotted it already. This is what we've always done for our checks, right? Mm -hmm. We did, the last section we covered was 8.2. And you all did a great job of this. You're like, oh, just got to check this. We're like, well, hold up. <laughs> we're like, stop. We don't know that. So right now, when this whole question is, we're trying to estimate what? 
this thing. And they'll go over here and go, we're estimating, we don't know what this is, question mark. We don't know what row is. And look what the first check is. It's like it's in the check. So I want to tell you what we do in confidence intervals. Because we don't know this yet, mm -hmm. we're going to use our p hat here instead. We're going to use p hat as in place of that because we don't know right yet. We're trying to estimate it. Right? Now, if, if someone had never did this before, you can just use, sometimes people just use 50%. Yeah, but should you know? it not be, it's kind of binomial too, because 700 said yes, the rest likely said no. That's right. So 700 over 1,000. That's very good. It is. They didn't have any like, are you in between, not sure. <laughs> so, all right, that's good. So, and we're really going to look at n times p hat <laughs> times 1 minus p hat. Now, somewhere in the wording up here, there is a p hat. And I always encourage you to write it off to the side somewhere. Let's go off to the side. What is p hat in this problem? We don't know this, but we just, someone did a sample, right? They did a poll. There's a thousand, there's a 700. I'm going to go off to the side here. What is this p hat? What's it equal to? Remember the formula? X over n. Okay, good. We'll just see what it is. I think it's great. You write it as a decimal. Because this will be a fraction. 700 out of the 1,000, which equals 0.7. I'll just keep this off to the side, because we'll need that just to, you know, verify our parts. Cool. All right. So I'm going to do that. you got a calculator nearby. What's, what's 1,000 times 0.7? What's 1 minus 0 0.7? 0 0.3. Good. Right. Unless you like to type 1 minus 0 0.7. I think we're good to go, right? Uh -huh. 210. 210. Holland, thank you so much. Isn't it well above 10? Mm -hmm. Check. This is going to be true. I want to check it. We, we can do it, but this is going to be fine. By the way, a lot of these polling places, you know? Gallup, CNN, <coughs> USA Today, all of them. Quinnipiac, a lot of times they're sampling about 1,000 voters. So it looks like a lot of times they're going to be good to go, aren't they? That's why. They're not sampling 30 <coughs> or 40. They wouldn't reach this. The distribution of people <coughs> wouldn't be approximately normal. Now, you might be curious, like, why are they only doing 1,000? Why don't they do, like, 5,000? So we'll talk about that. And we'll talk about that today. Why don't they go get, like, 3,000 or 5,000? Well, let's see if this is okay. We've got our 1,000 here. I want, is that less than 5%? Heck, I mean, I'll just use a million. I'll just use a million. Big N, right? Capital N is well over a million. We're talking about all likely voters in the U.S. It's well over a million. I'll just, if you just do 0 0.05 times a million, you're still going to be fine. That's six zeros, right? I mean, what is 5% of 1 million? You can hit on a calculator. Just see how big it is. 50,000. 50,000. We, we didn't pull 50,000. They only pulled what? 1,000. I mean, we were fine. So that's always going to be good in terms of these polls. Unless someone goes out and goes, oh, well, let's go sample 75,000 people. So and we just have to check that always at the beginning. You know, we're just making sure, was the sample size really big enough? So that this comes out, and you go, what is this telling us? <coughs> this, this whole idea of verifier requirements, so it doesn't sound so goofy and abstract, is the distribution of p hat is now approximately normal. So we get to use the bell curve. And we get to use that normal CDF stuff, everything we've been doing before, even the inverse norm button off the calculator. It's approximately normal, okay? All right, so now we're going to go to B. Here's the fun part. And we're going to construct a confidence interval. If you don't like the verb construct, you could replace that with compute. I mean, the author uses the word construct. You could say compute. But we're going to construct a compensator. We're going to get a couple numbers. It's an it's an interval, everyone. An interval is like uh, you know something like this. 12% comma 17%. When I tell you, you're going to get something like this. And you can write them as decimals too. We'll see what we get in our math, but you get stuff like this. When we're talking about intervals. Whoops. 
you get stuff like this, like 0 0.12 to 0 0.17. We'll see what we get. Now, that's coming up. So we're going to construct a confidence interval. I'll create the formula one. The formula is available in the book. The formula is even on the formula sheet. Uh, heck, even before you leave, do that. I'm going to pass out copies. Like, what? What are these formulas? Can I see these? You can have copies of this. So I like to construct it with you. The first thing you go, how do they? How do they get this thing started? We're trying to get this in a math formula to figure this out. Well, they start with something called a point estimate. They start with something called the point of estimate. We're going to right here. Go ahead and put CI and put an equal sign. CI stands for confidence interval. You go, where do they start? They start with something called the point estimate. You go, what's that? The P head. That's where they begin. But it's just like your point. <laughs> we need some focus point, some paramount point just to begin with. Oh, yeah, use your P head. Use that as your starting point. So this is called the point estimate. All right. Then we're going to add and subtract. I'll put this in words how many standard deviations it is away from that P here. Okay. okay? So that's what's going to go here. How many, after the plus minus, a math formula to represent how many standard deviations we are away from the P hat. So we add or subtract it. So it's the plus or minus. You go, what's the standard deviation? So now I've got to use the standard deviation formula P hat. for P hat. And this is coming from 8.2. Okay? And you go, what was that? Do you remember this? It P had a P Q P and then a 1 minus that divided by the yeah. n. Or rho times 1 minus rho over the n. But again, everyone, something funny's going on. We'll catch it right away. <coughs> do we know rho? Yeah. Like, do we know what rho is yet? No. This is what's funny about this section. We go, we don't know it. So wh what are we going to use in place of this every time in this section? P hat. Yeah, we're going to use p hat. So when you put your little p hats, little hats on that p, little hat on that, or you can call it p hat, q hat. And when that looks too